All right, this sun season, evolve your sun care with new Banana Boat 360 coverage. With Advanced Control Mist, it's a new way to spray. It's an all-new bottle for an all-new mist experience that smells great and is incredibly light on your skin. You can even customize your spray. Like to cover targeted areas, you just tap the trigger lightly, or you can pull the trigger fully for a long, continuous spray, ensuring long-lasting Banana Boat protection. Plus, it's refillable. From sweat-resistant sport formula to kids' SPF 50+, plus, this is sun care that'll come in handy when my kids are swimming, playing sports, when I'm hiking, when we're out at the lake, or whatever it is that we're doing outdoors. Shop Banana Boat 360 Mist at Walmart, Target, or Amazon. When you buy Kroger brand products, you feel like you're winning. That's because they offer proven quality at lower than low prices. In fact, we guarantee that you and your family will love how Kroger brand products taste, or you get your money back. So next time you're shopping for the family, look for delicious Kroger brand products, because they'll make you all feel like you're winning. Shop now, in-store, or online. Bakers, fresh for everyone. You know that feeling when you walk into your home, take a deep breath, and feel new? Well, that's what it's like to use Clorox Sentiva. Because Clorox Sentiva smells like coconut, cleans like Clorox, and feels like energy. It'll elevate any cleaning routine to not just clean, but also make every room smell like a tropical coconut getaway. Discover how Clorox Sentiva's powerful clean and refreshing scents can transform your space. Get yours in coconut or other fabulous scents at a nearby retail store. The South Dakota Stories, Volume 5. South Dakota seemed like the perfect place to unplug. But I ended up connecting to the world around me. A world where each sunset was painted. Where I felt adventures pulse with every step. And where cold water trickling, pine swaying, and grunting bison became my favorite soundtracks. I just wish I didn't have to leave. There's so much South Dakota, so little time. I won't let my body outweigh, outweigh everything that I'm made of. Won't spend my life trying to change. I'm learning to love who I am. I am strong, I feel free. I know every part of me is beautiful. And I will always outweigh. If you feel it, put your hands in the air. Show some love to the new while you're there. Let's take it one day at a time. Cause you and I outweigh. Happy Saturday, Outway fam. Amy and Lisa here. And I, Amy, am going to be bringing Lisa. Say hey, Lisa. Hello. The question for today's topic, and it's something that just popped in my head the other day. And I figure if it pops in my head, it must be popping into other people's heads. And for me, I feel like I have certain behaviors that I'm doing that are simply me taking care of myself. But then I think back to when I had really disordered behaviors when it came to food and exercise. And, you know, some fell into that, yes, eating disorder category, but disordered eating behaviors, however you want to define it. And maybe Lisa, you can help us with that. But I just am like, whoa, how do you know if you're trying to take care of yourself and feel like you're doing something quote unquote healthy slash good for your body, trying to take care of your insides? And by healthy, I mean actual like health and well-being of your body. Or if you're participating in disordered behaviors, does that make sense? It makes so much sense. And I think that's the area that a lot of people are trying to figure out and also finding themselves kind of in a state of, well, it started out from a good place of I want to take care of myself. And now I found myself here in this place where I don't like that I can't participate in life the way that I used to be able to, but I don't know how to scale back while also still prioritizing my health and well-being and all those things. So what advice or suggestions do you have for people who might be swimming in this water or (laughs) navigating this territory and trying to differentiate what's what? I think it's a great question. And we're going to go through a bunch of questions that you could ask yourself to really kind of figure out what land am I living in? And I think even just taking a scan right now of yourself and just really saying, is what I'm doing enjoyable and feel good for my body? I think that's a good question to just start asking yourself. 
because many people will probably find themselves really, if they're honestly answering, saying, okay, for a while it did feel good, but now I'm at this place where I don't even feel like myself anymore. My thoughts are consumed by food. I am constantly feeling guilty. I'm planning. I can't just have a sporadic girls' night out without reviewing a menu. And all those sorts of thoughts are kind of creeping right in. Before we get to the list, I just want to really kind of set the tone here that this is a lot to untangle because weight and health and the changes we make to our weight and our health are really intertangled topics that are kind of all meshed together when we talk about them. And so it's really hard for somebody who wants to take good care of themselves to start by modifying their behaviors for their health and then find themselves in a place where, oh, is this healthy? Does that make sense? Yeah. And I'm curious too, like how far the pendulum may swing for people. But I guess the answer to that would be everybody's different. And what what I mean by that is, I feel like I went from never allowing myself something to then, you know, living with the as if mentality, which we've talked about numerous times on here, but like, okay, somehow I always use Oreos as an example, but I swing to never having an Oreo and not allowing it to then woo to the other side of, I now buy Oreos and there might be a season in which, and Lisa, you can even speak to this, in which you might be consuming more Oreos than probably you will once the pendulum levels out. Mm. Like it's like you swing, like, and I'm just saying for me, yes, when I started to change my behavior, I swung so far to the right, but then it's like, oh, I realized the Oreos aren't really as magnificent as I thought. And I leveled off and then my pendulum is in the middle where it's kind of like, it's just, if I want an Oreo, I eat it. If I don't, I don't. I think that restriction, whether it's mentally happening or physically happening, is going to cause us to kind of explode when we have the access. So we go from not allowing the Oreos to, oh my God, yes, Oreos. And then if we're really kind of paying attention and and starting to unlearn a lot of what we learned and starting to bring curiosity to the table rather than the harsh judgment and inner criticism, we're really taking note to really be like, yeah, Oreos are good, but are Oreos as good as I thought that they were? Now that I've really broken down this idea that I could only have Oreos either, you know, on a special occasion or never at all, really. I just used Oreos as an example, but since we're just off of Thanksgiving break, I'll just say something I noticed about myself uh, at my Thanksgiving meal was some stuff that I, again, put up on this pedestal and thought is I just eat as much as I possibly can on this holiday because I'm not ever going to eat this food again till the next holiday or however you want to phrase it. But it's like, oh, some of this food is not as amazing as as I thought it once was. And that's because I've been in the process and now I'm in the process of I've I've unlearned all the things that I had taught myself previously. And so now I see my plate and I just see it as like an enjoyable time with family. And I cooked every meal. I didn't, I used to alter every recipe known to man. And that was a behavior that was me trying to quote, be as healthy and weight conscious as possible. And I thought I was doing myself a favor, but it was very time consuming and frustrating and trying to calculate and figure it all out. And so that's just something that I noticed about this holiday season. I cooked all the sides and did everything. And I just followed every recipe to the T exactly how it was. I don't care what the butter, what the this, what the that, because we don't have any food allergies in our home. So I just made it as is. And you know what? you know, it was awesome. The cooking experience was more enjoyable and awesome. But then it was awesome to sit down at the table and not have these foods having control over me. I had control over them. All right, sunny weather is upon us and the sun out means more time outside. My kids have sports. There's also swimming, hiking, going to the lake. And I'm always on the lookout for sun care that's easy for all of us. And that's where the new Banana Boat 360 coverage is coming to the rescue. It smells good. It is incredibly light on your skin. It is not greasy, which I think we can all appreciate. And it's an all new bottle with advanced control mist. It's a new way to spray. Better control means coverage that you can count on with a precision pump to get all your big and little spots. I mean, you can literally customize the spray. You just gotta tap the trigger lightly to cover targeted areas 
or you can pull the trigger fully for a long, continuous spray, ensuring long-lasting Banana Boat protection. Banana Boat 360 coverage is also aerosol-free, which is a plus in my book for sure. It's available in Banana Boat's high-performance, water-resistant sport formula, and pediatrician-tested kids SPF 50. You can shop Banana Boat 360 Mist at Walmart, Target, or Amazon. So I love traveling and coming home to my bed because it's comfy and familiar. I love crawling into it. Well, what if you could take your bed on the road with you so that way you got good night's sleep while you're on a trip? And it's not your entire bed, but at least your bedding, which is the best part. Let me introduce you to Cozy Earth's luxurious bedding. Now, Cozy Earth is travel-friendly and hassle-free, and the bedding comes in these adorable totes, which makes it really easy for you to take it on trips with you. They also have really amazing loungewear, so if you're on a long flight, you can stay cool and comfy with Cozy Earth's temperature-regulating bamboo joggers and pullover crew, and it'll add a touch of style to your travel ensemble as well. So whether you're exploring stuff near or far, take a little bit of home with you. Cozy Earth has everything you need to turn every moment into pure bliss. Discover your next destination for ultimate comfort at Cozy Earth. Visit CozyEarth.com and use our code OUTWAY at checkout to get 35% off. And let them know that we sent you after you check out. You're probably careful with your personal information. But what about the other places that have it? Like the doctor's office that mixed up your files. They have your social security number. The power company that mistakenly cut your service has your payment info and last three addresses. And the hotel that lost your reservation has your passport info. Your information is in endless places out of your control. Any one of them could accidentally expose you to hackers and identity theft through lax security, breaches, or simple mistakes. But LifeLock monitors millions of data points every second and alerts you to a wide range of threats. If your identity is stolen, a U.S.-based restoration specialist will fix it, guaranteed, or your money back. With plans covering up to $3 million for stolen funds and expenses. Mistakes happen. Don't let not having protection be one of them. Save up to 40% your first year at LifeLock.com slash iHeart. That's LifeLock.com slash iHeart to save up to 40%. Terms apply. Hey, guys. Back at the playground again, huh? Yep. You know what this playground could use? A wine country. Heck, yeah. And some waves. So we could go surfing. I oh, <laughs> ah, love that. A redwood forest would be cool. I'm in. Ah, ski slopes. Let's do it. Um, can a girl go shopping? Yeah, baby. Wait. Did we just invent California? Discover why California is the ultimate playground at visitcalifornia.com. And I think, you know, again, this is a gray area. Yeah. So if you're listening to this and you're like, well, I know that gluten or dairy doesn't right. work for me or for whatever reason, I don't want to eat turkey this holiday, but you're, the rest of your behaviors and mindset is healthy and not coming from a place of disorder, that doesn't mean that you are exhibiting disordered eating behavior. But for you, Amy, you know, coming to a holiday, making all the modifications, kind of just like, you know, ma- making it more about the food than the people and the experience was a big one for you to overcome. But to another listener, you know, it might be totally fine for them to sub out dairy because it's not coming from a place of restrictions, it's coming from a place of care. So all these conversations are really, I think, nuanced. And we're going to get into the question so that we can kind of start to untangle that a little bit more. But like you said, we're coming off of Thanksgiving Day, big meal, and we're going into the holidays, which brings up a lot of season of, okay, I'm going to take good care of myself starting January 1st. It's 2022 almost, and we're still having this conversation. And it really brings up the question of, do we know how to take good care of ourselves? Like, what does that mean to take good care of ourselves? Has this been modeled by our parents or our caregivers? Has our pediatrician, when we were younger, sat down and really talked to us about what health and wellness is? Have our doctors in our lives spoken to us about how to take good care of ourselves or our teachers outside of the topic of just lose weight? And I want to just frame this conversation like this because I think so many of us don't know how to take care of ourselves and therefore we fall victim to the one way that 
we talk about health universally, which is in the form of weight loss or instilling fear that weight gain means something negative for our health. So for all of our listeners here, just like take a deep breath, relax, and really listen to this conversation from a place of you not judging yourself. You're not trying to diagnose yourself of having an eating disorder or disordered eating, but rather from a place of, I want to feel really well. I want to be a person who feels well and models a good behavior for those around me. And how can I do that starting with myself? So the questions that we want to kind of break into today is first of all, Some of these questions are like very specific. Some are a little bit more macro and might involve more further dissection when you're not listening to this episode. But the first one is what's your intent behind the choice that you're making? So is there a deep love for yourself and a desire to want to take care of your well-being behind the choice? Or is that a fear of what if you don't do that. So let's just bring the, you know, you said, Amy, for you, like you, you allowed yourself to have foods like butter cooked into your, let's say your, your spinach, right? Maybe you made creamed spinach this year. Previously was taking the butter out a form of, I want to take good care of myself, or was it coming from a place of fear and restriction? Formerly fear and restriction. (laughs) Right. And I think that like underneath all of these things, whether it's working out, are we moving our body from a place of love and wanting to take good care and lubricate our joints? Or even after a holiday meal, we might feel sluggish and moving our body might be a nice way to connect back to your body after spending time with all of your loved ones who might bring in a little bit of chaos. But the question again here is, are you doing it to burn off all the food or are you doing it because it's going to feel good inside your own body? And so it's really hard to kind of really say that like working out after a big meal like Thanksgiving or Christmas meal is a bad thing or moving your body is a bad thing, right? That's not disordered necessarily. It's only if you consider the intent. Going back to your example of cooking with butter, another listener might say, I really don't feel well when I have mashed potatoes. And I love when I make my own mashed potatoes that use a butter sub or whatever it is, right? Can they do that from a place of love and have that be a healthy behavior where your healthy behavior is cooking them normally? And it all goes back to that intent. What is your intent and what is your fear Amy, you know, all of us, what is your fear really about? And I think for a lot of people, there's this idea that we have to look a certain way. It's very deep down. And that brings up a fear of worthiness, a sense of belonging. And that's not all coming to the surface when we're making choices about food or exercise. We're just stuck in the hamster wheel of this is what we have to do. And I am bad. So I did it. But if we could dive deeper into the fear or the belief I think then we could bring some tenderness to it. Some, yes, of course I wanna be loved and I wanna feel worthy, but how is this interrupting my life through this kind of weird modified behavior that I'm partaking in? Like I said, that was one of the more like macro ones that we're we're kind of talking about. Yeah, (laughs) and then so are there some other questions we could ask ourselves? Yeah, are you able to be flexible? I think is a really big one. And it's one in my life that I try to always bring to the table because when I was super disordered, I was not able to be flexible. If I ordered a meal and it came with cheese, I would send that back. Because if I had a dot of cheese, which I was not allergic to, but I convinced myself I was allergic to, that would set me into a a mode of panic. And when you live your life, when you travel, when you go on dates or out with your family, Being flexible is really important so that you can live in accordance to your values and what really is important. So I would ask anybody to ask themselves, what would happen if you don't do X or if you don't eat X or if you do eat X, what does that make you feel like? So, you know, for for working out, if you miss a workout or even a yoga class, something less intense, Are you able to be okay with that, knowing that there are other ways to take care of your body and that one change in your routine isn't going to affect your well-being unless you mentally allow it to? Yeah, and I would say something I noticed even with myself, and this has not happened overnight by any means. So if some of this seems maybe even overwhelming, like thinking about trying to be flexible, 
um, and going with the flow. That is totally normal and natural for you to feel that way. But we have our friend Kat is having a birthday brunch. Kat Defada, sometimes she's on Outway or she's been on Truthiest Life with Lisa or Four Things with me. She has her own podcast, You Need Therapy. She's been a great resource for us and friend, but she's celebrating her birthday and she's having a brunch. And that's something that getting invited to something at a restaurant that I had never been to, that I didn't know or have control over or understand, and like a group of people. Now it's been a few years, but that's something that would have previously thrown me for a loop. I would not have been flexible. I maybe wouldn't have even gone. And that's really sad because it's not about me. It's about my friend. And I think of certain events that maybe I've missed out on just because of my fear of how I was going to navigate the food situation. And when she brought it to my attention the other day of like, hey, this is the restaurant. This is the time. I just was able to just like how it should be say, yeah, yes, I'll be there. And not even I, I haven't even though I think it's normal to look up the menu if you're genuinely curious about what you're going to be having. For and sure. like, if you get excited about food, but again, yes, to Lisa's point, the questions, what is your intention behind looking up the menu? And why are you doing it? Is it because of fear or is it because of excitement about eating somewhere new and you just want to check out the foods that are on there? And so for me, though, my particular behavior around this has been I'm going, I'm excited to go. I'm not stressed out about it. I'm going to be flexible. And I'm personally just not even going to look at the menu till I get there because for me, I'm good. So that's just an example of how I've seen that play out differently for me. And my hope is that anybody listening, you can get to that point too. I love that. I think it's such a good anecdotal story that really like reminds me of so many times in my life where I couldn't go to something because the food didn't fit what I would eat. And I know, again, a lot of us are going to be like traveling over the holiday or, or just traveling as life opens up again. And for me, I think about traveling for me, which was like, I'd bring all my snacks with me and all my food, you know, and I have seen flexibility play out, obviously not so much travel in the past year and a half or two years, but at airports, being able to just like go to a, I don't know, those like shops where they sell nuts and chips and whatever, and grab a bag of whatever, because it's something to eat instead of the perfect thing to eat, knowing that I don't need to starve myself to get to that destination just because I don't have the right food. And again, nothing wrong with bringing your own snacks on a plane if you like your own snacks, but in the absence of not having that available and feeling hunger or a desire to eat something, are you able to bring some flexibility? All right, sunny weather is upon us and the sun out means more time outside. My kids have sports. There's also swimming, hiking, going to the lake. And I'm always on the lookout for sun care that's easy for all of us. And that's where the new Banana Boat 360 coverage is coming to the rescue. It smells good. It is incredibly light on your skin. It is not greasy, which I think we can all appreciate. And it's an all new bottle with advanced control mist. It's a new way to spray. Better control means coverage that you can count on with a precision pump to get all your big and little spots. I mean, you can literally customize the spray. You just gotta tap the trigger lightly to cover targeted areas, or you can pull the trigger fully for a long continuous spray ensuring long-lasting Banana Boat protection. Banana Boat 360 coverage is also aerosol-free, which is a plus in my book for sure. It's available in Banana Boat's high-performance, water-resistant sport formula, and pediatrician-tested kids SPF 50. You can shop Banana Boat 360 Mist at Walmart, Target, or Amazon. Hey, guys. Back at the playground again, huh? Yep. You know what this playground could use? A wine country. Heck yeah! And some waves. So we could go surfing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> ah, love that! A redwood forest would be cool. I'm in! Ah, ski slopes. Let's do it! Um, can a girl go shopping? Yeah, baby! Wait! Did we just invent California? Discover why California is the ultimate playground at visitcalifornia.com. Are you feeling overwhelmed by anxiety? Struggling to find restful sleep or plagued by a restless inability to focus? 
It's time to break free from the chains of mental health challenges and discover a path to healthy living. Welcome to Amen University, founded by renowned psychiatrist and brain health expert, Dr. Daniel Amen. Dr. Amen, alongside a team of esteemed doctors and experts in their fields, understands the struggles you're facing and are here to offer solutions. From debilitating anxiety to sleepless nights filled with worry, our courses are meticulously crafted to target these specific challenges head on. Join us on a journey of transformation led by Dr. Amen and a roster of top tier professionals. Say goodbye to the constant battle with your mind and embrace a future filled with hope and possibility. Visit our website today to explore our courses and start your journey towards a brighter tomorrow. Use code BRAIN10 and get 10% off. That's code BRAIN10 and get 10% off your first purchase. Amen University, because your mental health matters. When you have health insurance, it's easy to think, I'm covered, no worries, not so fast. Remember, your out-of-pocket costs are not covered by insurance. That can be a lot of money for your family. But how do you know you're not being overbilled? It's estimated that over 50% of medical bills contain errors. Unless you're a billing expert, how do you know your medical bills are accurate? HealthLock can help. HealthLock is a healthcare technology company that securely connects with your insurance. When your medical claims come in, HealthLock Technology reviews the claims for errors like overbilling, wrong codes, and fraud. HealthLock makes it easy to find and fix hidden errors so you pay only what you owe. You can even have HealthLock work on your behalf to get money back from select past bills. To date, HealthLock has helped its members save over $130 million. Bottom line, insurance alone isn't enough. To save, visit HealthLock.com. Do it today before you see another healthcare provider. I did mention your values, so I just want to circle back to one of those more macro questions, which is something, Amy, you and I have spoken about a lot on the podcast, which is clarifying your values. If you don't know what you value, what you want out of your life, it's going to be really hard to make choices that reflect who you want to be. And I do this exercise a few times a year because I'm always re-clarifying what I'm valuing and bringing it to the forefront of my mind so that... I can continue to make choices from a place of who do I want to be? So, you know, for you, Amy, being a good friend to Kat is clearly very important. If you were starting to have those disordered eating thoughts of, oh, well, I'm going to this restaurant, they have nothing on there that looks like something that I'd eat, would you be able to say, well, what do I value? I value being a good friend. I'm just using this as an example. And then you'd be able to reroute, okay, there's nothing for me to eat, but I'll settle and have this. Or I'll eat something before and then, you know, get some appetizers there, whatever it is. Just reframing it so that your choices reflect the person you want to be. Next thing to ask yourself is, are you having intense cravings? When I was limiting so many foods out of a state of will and willpower and restriction, I also thought about these foods all the time. I think your Oreo example, Amy, is a great one, and you're always talking about Oreos because that was probably one of the foods that, you know, you weren't allowed to have but hovered over your mind all the time. Oh, yeah. I mean, yes, because that's something I think back to when I was a teenager, 14, 15, something about Oreos. I would see my friends eating Oreos or it would be in their parents' pantry. And like my mom, we didn't do that. I think we bought, oh, what were those? They were snack wells, cookies, you know, which I think, you know, back in the day, I don't know what was so special about those. Maybe they were lower calorie or something, but I remember stocking up on those. But of course I would eat like you know, 10 snack wells. So I might as well just have eaten a dang Oreo, but you know. (laughs) That's what I call beating around the bush, kind of trying to avoid what you really want by having something else, which usually plays out as you having the thing you tried to sub in for the thing you really wanted, only to then end up also having the thing you really wanted, which is how most binges usually happen. All right. Next one is, do you know what you like? So Amy, like you said, you showed up to Thanksgiving and you found out by giving yourself permission to eat everything or try everything that there are some foods that you were trying so hard to avoid that you actually are like, eh, these aren't even that fantastic. Yeah. Oh, that's happened with Thanksgiving meal. It's happened with gas station snacks because, you know, I've got two kids and sometimes we buy things and I used to think those combos, I do love combos. Don't, Mm, I I don't, well, Mm. love is probably strong. But I mean, I thought combos were like the most amazing thing in the world. And while they are nice, like we got them recently and I'm like eating one and I'm like, okay, yeah, these are good, but no reason to obsess over buying a bag of them and, 
you know, not trusting myself around them. Now I think I could eat a few and not look at a combo for several months. <laughs> and this might go in the other direction. Are you forcing yourself to drink green juice or celery juice because you think you're going to get a certain result? Um, exercise, are you doing what will burn the most or tapping into what really feels good? And again, that gray area here, that's not to say that a high intensity boot camp, if that's what you like, isn't enjoyable for you or at some times, but it might not be, or you might find that you do love that, but on a day where your body's like, ooh, this doesn't feel good, are you able to call in rest knowing that that's what you like and that's what you need? So start taking inventory of what feels good for you, food, exercise, anything wellness wise, and tap into that every step of the way. Next thing I want you to ask yourself is, does the scale impact your health and wellness choices? I get a lot of listeners who will message me and say, I need to lose weight. I see the number on the scale. My doctor tells me it's unhealthy, but I also want to listen to my body. And I think that those things can all be true. You can want to lose weight if you're not feeling physically good inside of your body. But the question is here, is the scale motivating your choices every step of the way? Because if that is your motivator and you are dependent on this number, you're not tapping into how you feel and what is working for your body. You're letting this number really dictate everything along the way. And I know that this is really a hard one to walk away from, and I don't mean to skip over it, but it's a really, really important one to at least mention here and maybe have a bigger conversation about it down the line. Next one is what percentage of your thoughts are about food? Now we have to eat, it's important, it's helpful if we meal prep for a lot of our lives. It's not that we should never be thinking about food or that thinking about it in advance is a bad thing. But what percentage of those thoughts are consumed by thoughts about food? If you're in the 60, 70, 80, 90% here, or even 100%, which is how I knew that I had disordered eating, <laughs> that's really a not fun place to live because you're not living in line with your values. You're not having fun with your friends. You're not living life. You're consumed with thoughts about food. I would lose sleep over food. Um, I mean, it was, it was just a constant cycle of trying to ward off hunger to only find myself completely um, stuffed and ruminating and feeling guilty and coming up with something to counteract what I had done damage-wise where the cycle was just, it enveloped me. Like I was swallowed whole by what started out as I want to be quote unquote healthy. Yeah, I'm right there with you. Like I was at 100% for sure. <laughs> Yeah, maybe 110%. But that was really my red flag of seeking therapy before the word disordered eating was ever talked about. And my therapist still didn't call it that. It wasn't years later that I was able to put a label on what I was experiencing. But my red flag was, oh my gosh, I hate not being able to think about anything else. I hate not being able to sleep. This is not the way I want to live. What's wrong with me? And then the last thing that I want everybody to really think about here is what does the voice inside your head sound like? When you hear that voice inside of your head that's, that's telling you to eat the Oreo or not eat the Oreo, what does it sound like? If you're truly trying to take care of yourself, like we kind of talked about in this episode, the voice in your head should be loving when you eat anything, even if it's not the food that's the pinnacle of health. But if it's starting to tell you you shouldn't have that or you don't deserve that or you always F up, like here you go doing it again as you walk into the pantry and reach for the Oreo, I think it's time to kind of take a step back and realize that you're not really taking care of yourself. It's this guise of trying to take good care of yourself. Yeah, I think that that's important to remember. And also, too, we've talked about macros and counting macros like your carbs, your fat, your protein. And for me, that was a disordered eating red flag because I thought about that so much and it consumed me. This is another thing that made me even think of this original question of what is the, how do you, how can you tell the difference of taking care of yourself and disordered behaviors? Because knowing how much maybe protein you think your body might, you know, function best at and carbs, like knowing that amount and having, being able to look at your plate and think like, oh, maybe I haven't given myself any, you know, dark greens lately or listening to your body and knowing like, oh, maybe it would be a good idea for me to throw some extra protein in here somehow, whatever that looks like. That's huge for me to know, like I can still take care of myself and care about what's on my plate and it not be disordered. And so that's where I, you know, hopefully you can find yourself landing one day, but it's not 
disordered to care about what's on your plate. Mm, no. And it's also not a mandatory thing that you need to do. Right. But for those who are trying to take care of your body, and you know, I think, Amy, you're familiar with my modern mindful eating philosophy, which really brings food to the forefront of learning about how it can impact you in a positive way rather than a negative way so that you can connect with food, your body, and make food choices in a way that is supporting your total well-being every step of the way. Awesome. Okay. Well, we hope this episode is helpful for so many of you. It definitely helps me still, even in recovery, to just have these conversations and remind myself. And it really is like a new neural pathway you're trying to build you know, it's going to take repetition. And so we hope you'll join us every Saturday. We're putting up a new episode. You can even send us an email, hello at outweighpodcast.com. And you can find us on socials. Lisa is at Lisa Haim, H-A-Y-I-M. And I am Radio Amy. And I would say definitely Lisa's a good follow (laughs) and her resources, especially with Fork the Noise and her different programs. Um, If you're looking to dig a little bit further, you can find her contact info on Instagram as well. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next Saturday. Bye. All right, this sun season, evolve your sun care with new Banana Boat 360 coverage. With Advanced Control Mist, it's a new way to spray. It's an all-new bottle for an all-new mist experience that smells great and is incredibly light on your skin. You can even customize your spray. Like, to cover targeted areas, you just tap the trigger lightly, or you can pull the trigger fully for a long, continuous spray, ensuring long-lasting banana boat protection. Plus, it's refillable. From sweat-resistant sport formula to kids' SPF 50+, plus. This is sun care that'll come in handy when my kids are swimming, playing sports, when I'm hiking, when we're out at the lake, or whatever it is that we're doing outdoors. Shop Banana Boat 360 Mist at Walmart, Target, or Amazon. The South Dakota Stories, Volume 5. South Dakota seemed like the perfect place to unplug. But I ended up connecting to the world around me. A world where each sunset was painted. Where I felt adventures pulse with every step. And where cold water trickling, pine swaying, and grunting bison became my favorite soundtracks. I just wish I didn't have to leave. There's so much South Dakota, so little time. Are you feeling overwhelmed by anxiety, struggling to find restful sleep, or plagued by a restless inability to focus? It's time to break free from the chains of mental health challenges and discover a path to healthy living. Welcome to Amen University, founded by renowned psychiatrist and brain health expert, Dr. Daniel Amen. Dr. Amen, alongside a team of esteemed doctors and experts in their fields, understands the struggles you're facing and are here to offer solutions. From debilitating anxiety to sleepless nights filled with worry, our courses are meticulously crafted to target these specific challenges head on. Join us on a journey of transformation led by Dr. Amen and a roster of top tier professionals. Say goodbye to the constant battle with your mind and embrace a future filled with hope and possibility. Visit our website today to explore our courses and start your journey towards a brighter tomorrow. Use code BRAIN10 and get 10% off. That's code BRAIN10 and get 10% off your first purchase. Amen University, because your mental health matters. Hey, it's Bobby Bones. Are you looking to build this year? If so, there is no better time than right now to start planning and to get your spot on the construction schedule. If you need a garage, a stall barn, a storage for vehicles, RV, boat, collectibles, or even a, a shop for your farm, hobbies, or car restoration projects, visit MortonBuildings.com and start your construction process. With superior materials, craftsmanship, best-in-class warranty, Morton Buildings are made to last for generations. At Morton, the difference is in the details. From their cutting-edge innovations to their craftsmen in the field, they are dedicated to surpassing expectations. Their legacy of excellence spans more than 120 years, and Morton Buildings is 100% employee-owned with more than a quarter million satisfied customers. That means they're the industry leader you can trust. When you choose Morton, you'll experience quality at every step of the building process, starting before the walls even go up. Visit mortonbuildings.com to get started today.